Hi, my name is Alan Reynolds and I'm a pre-sales system engineer with WrightStar specializing in the Atlassian suite of solutions. Atlassian is a uh, solution provider that provides us a, a full end-to-end -end suite of solutions that provide everything from uh, software development through IT service management and business project and process management for all kinds of other business units. What I'd like to look at with you today is JIRA Service Desk, the uh, service desk solution in the suite from a human resources perspective, sort of with those use cases in mind. So this is just a bit of an illustration of all the uh, various Alassian solutions and where they fit into the life cycle of things. We'll also talk just a little bit about Confluence, the Atlassian wiki style collaboration documentation tool. But we'll start with JIRA Service Desk. And Jira Service Desk really has two roles, an agent role and a customer role. And customers are free and interact with the system through the portal. And agents are allowed to do all the other stuff in the system that, uh, that folks can do on the back end to uh, work tickets and open tickets for other people and, and, uh, and transfer to backline and those sorts of things. So I wanted to start today from the customer perspective. So I'm logged in now as my little demo user, Patsy Portal to the uh, to a, a service desk portal here that I've created for our demonstration. So uh, this one is built out with some human resources sorts of request types. Um, and ultimately the portal is where Patty can Patsy can come to 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 uh, to find out knowledge and to submit issues and interact with the service desk on those. So when Patsy comes here, she can uh, search knowledge, let's say, uh, maybe she wants to know how to onboard a new employee. Maybe she can drill down into knowledge base articles here that uh, can help her. And these knowledge base articles are, are in Confluence, the wiki style collaboration documentation tool I mentioned. If paired up with JIRA Service Desk, they can provide a knowledge base for the portal. Here at the bottom of the page, Patsy can select from various uh, request categories or in, and inside of them, the various request types that she might be able to submit. Uh, I've created uh, categories for benefits and payroll and HR administrators with various kinds of requests uh, having to do with sort of HR types of things. But ultimately your portal would be designed with the exact kinds of requests that you would want uh, to have in your system with the categories that you'd like to have them in. And even the uh, fields we'll see in just a moment that you would like to have on those requests. So let's drill into one of these and fill out a couple of requests as an end user. First, let's do a 401k question. Let's say maybe I have a, you know, oh, here you go. I have a 401k question. Um, as I begin to type here, you see that I have some knowledge base article suggestions that I can have displayed if, if I've configured this request type to do so to help me maybe inside of this request, uh, maybe to prevent me from needing to submit it or help me understand how to or something. We do want to go ahead and submit this, so I'll just dismiss those and click create to uh, create an issue here. So uh, Patsy now has created a, a first request here from the portal, uh, and uh, she can see that here uh, as she submits it. Um, so I'm going to drill down in. That was just a single request that had just a, a single field to fill out. Let's do one more real quick. Maybe we'll say Patsy also needs to have a request a new job uh, cost center be created. So we'll say maybe we need a new cost center. We'll call it number 32. Uh, you know, we'll say our reason is because ultimately, again, you would provide whatever data elements you would like your users to fill out when they submit these kinds of requests. But um, I wanted to show you this particular request in my system as I click create here, because what it uh, involves is also an approval. I've said in my system, new cost centers need some sort of approval before we'll do it. So we've set up this uh, particular request type to uh, be configured that way. So when Patsy submitted it, she can see that it needs approval and she can even see who it's needed from there. So that's how Patsy can search knowledge and submit new requests for the, uh, the service desk. But she can also here in the portal find and update her existing requests with this request button at the top. My request gets Patsy to a list of previously submitted requests that she could then search by 
uh, status or who created it or a particular request type or, or even a keyword. Maybe she wants to get back to that 401k request. She can search for that and get right back to her request and, and be brought into uh, that same view where she, right after she submitted it, where she can view any activity that's happened on it and maybe add any comments she needs to. Uh, you know, maybe uh, uh, I need this quick or something. We can uh, make a comment here so Patsy can communicate back and forth with the assigned approver in the case of that other request or the assigned agent in this case. So that's what customers can do here in the portal. And uh, now it's time to toggle over to the agent side of things and pick up a couple of those requests and, and see things from an agent perspective, the folks that are the licensed users in the system. So I'm going to go back to my Chrome browser and move to my uh, a tab I have open here where I'm logged in as myself as an agent here. And when you log in as an agent, you land on a dashboard, which is a collection of gadgets here that are uh, placed on a dashboard. Um, and these can be configured however you'd like, and you can have as many of these dashboards as you'd like to support whatever needs you might have. And there are many different types of gadgets you can add to the dashboard to show just the data that you want to show, like an activity stream or heat maps or pie charts or bar charts or bubble maps or two-dimensional uh, table breakdowns and those sorts of things. These are great sources of reporting. So once an agent gleans whatever knowledge they might need to from here, you could just begin to work in issues right straight from here. Maybe I'd want to drill right into one of Patsy's uh, requests here and begin to work on it. Or I could just choose a project to work with. Now that's uh, a good thing to talk about. Uh, issues, uh, JIRA at its main level is really records that they call issues that are grouped into spaces or, or containers called projects. So I'm going to choose the project, the container of issues that uh, Patsy had been working with there in the portal, or the one here I've called my human resources service desk. And when I log into, I uh, open up a, a JIRA service desk project, I'm brought to a list of queues here where I can uh, get to work as I need it. Now, uh, these queues are fully configurable as well. You can make them whatever names you'd like, and you can uh, have them show whatever issues you'd like. Ultimately, it's just a criteria against all the issues in the project uh, that creates each of these headings to allow you to drill down to the work that you need. So maybe we've got one here that's all open requests, or maybe uh, all my payroll type requests, or all my benefit requests, because that's handled by a different team, let's say or uh, maybe things assigned to me or things about to miss SLAs or any number of kinds of cues uh, that you can define there. But ultimately, it, the point of them is to get down to a list of issues that need attention. And in this case, we know we have two right here from Patsy. So let's drill into one of those. And uh, we can see here uh, as an agent, I can see a lot more data than Patsy could there in the portal. I can see that her 401k uh, question request type there in the portal actually mapped me to a task here on the back end. And it, it'll always be this first field on an issue that the issue type that tells you the type of issue and how it's going to behave, what fields will be available on it, and more importantly, maybe, what workflow it's associated with. It'll always be this issue type that determines the workflow an issue will go through. And you can view that workflow by clicking the View Workflow button here. And uh, ultimately, uh, you get a pictorial view of that workflow here, which is ultimately just a collection of states that an issue could be in and all of the allowed transitions between them. So uh, in this case, we come into Open, and then we could take a transition here called Mark is Done to move to Done, or we could take this Start Progress transition to, uh, to move to In Progress. Uh, and, and really, this is where the power of the JIRA workflow is. To, to decide who can make these transitions and and uh, and what happens on those transitions about notifying other people or, or updating fields or that sort of thing. So another thing I see is that these this request has an SLA on it uh, with two different timers, one uh, first response SLA with a one day timer and a resolution uh, SLA with a two day timer. Now, again, these are fully configurable and, and can uh, fire out for whatever calendars you'd like them to. Um, but these are just examples. 
So uh, I see that Patsy said she needs this quickly. So maybe I want to let her know I've got this really quick. Um, so I'll go ahead and assign this to me and we'll start progress on this issue, which I can choose to assign it to me. Or at this point, I could assign it to even someone else uh, from the other agents in my team here. But I'll go ahead and assign it to me using the quick button there. And I'll uh, let Patsy know I've got this. You know, I've got this and I'll be back with you. Oops. Back. Oh, I'll <laughs> be back with you. My goodness. Well, I will just leave it at that since I'm having such trouble typing today. I'm going to go ahead and click the Start Progress button, and that is going to move me into work in progress status, just like we saw it would on my workflow. That also happened to meet my first response SLA here because it was configured to do that. Now Patsy knows I've got this thing, and, and I, can, uh, uh, I can review her question, and maybe I provide that. Uh, maybe I just answer her with a comment. I also have the option in those comments to attach files if I'd like to. So I could add attachments as I uh, communicate back and forth with Patsy to send her form she might need or whatever. Or I could even choose from my list of related knowledge base articles to send her a knowledge base article as a, uh, as a, as a comment so that she could review that if that might be helpful. But ultimately, we'll say I've worked through this issue and I can just choose at this point to mark it as completed. Mark is done in this case. And anytime you do resolve an issue, you provide a resolution. Um, I'm going to choose done, but this list is configurable. I could again respond here to the customer if I'd like, um, but I won't at this point. And now the issue is all wrapped up and I've answered Patsy's question and we show that it's been completed. And uh, when that uh, issue is completed, we even have the option, if surveys are enabled, to send out a survey with a five point, uh, with a, a configurable question with a five point scale that folks can respond on. So let's pick up Patsy's other one here, real quick, her new cost center, just because I want to show you the approval piece. You see, at this point in the workflow, we've got a, a direction we could go to uh, either be approved or to be declined. Um, we also have one other option of canceling, but you'll notice here in my screen, I don't have the option to do anything but cancel because I'm not allowed to approve or decline this. It's going to be Mark that has to do that. Now, Mark, if he's an agent uh, and works other tickets, uh, could just do that through this interface. But I wanted to show you as well that uh, approvers, if they are really only just customer uh, end user portal users, as well as approvers, they can do all that in the portal. So Mark here, Mark Manager, in a different browser here that I've got up, is logged into the same portal Patsy was, and he can do all those same things, searching knowledge and, and submitting issues and finding, updating his existing issues. But in his request list up here, he also has a link to his approvals because he has approvals waiting. And he can come in and uh, choose to review the hat and comment back and forth with Patsy and, and decide, we'll say in this case, to eventually approve. Um, when he approves, that uh, gets noted, and uh, Patsy can see that. And as I come back to the agent interface and refresh that, now we've gotten that approval that we needed from Mark, and I can begin to work this issue and move it into progress and, you know, assign it to me and do whatever I need to do here. And maybe I don't know what to do, so I do have the option also at this point of... Uh, uh, being able to at mention somebody. Maybe I need to reach out to Paula to ask a question, you know, some question. My goodness, my typing today. Uh, and, and maybe I don't want to know the customer here, Patsy, to know I'm asking about this. So rather than choosing to share that with customer, I'm just going to comment internally so that anyone viewing the issue from the agent side could see that, but Patsy won't. And Paula will get an email notification that she's been looped into this uh, issue and she can come in to the system with the link in that email and review what's happened here and, and provide feedback and, and collaborate on that. And maybe even needs to be assigned to the issue at that point if she's going to be the one to take over it. Um, but again, we would just work this through however that uh, process would be in your environment uh, to some sort of resolution. We'll again just say done. And now we've wrapped up Patsy's two issues here. Um, so that's just a quick spin through how uh, Jira Service Desk might be used from a, uh, uh, a use case around a, sort of a human resources uh, perspective. So hopefully that's been helpful, and uh, I'll sign off now.